One of public transit's best features is the ability to move lots of people to one location. Guess what happens all the time where lots of people go to one place? Sports! Baseball is America's pastime, and so are some of America's legacy transit systems. Today, I'm going to be rating every MLB baseball stadium out of 10, basically based on how easy it is to get there on transit. So here's the general framework that I used. It's not perfect, and if you happen to live in one of these areas and know the area a lot better than me, then please feel free to let me know how it is on the ground down below. Anyway, the criteria I used is as follows. A bus route nearby is 0.5 points, a rail stop nearby is one point, and a rapid transit rail stop is two points. All trip times that you see from downtown were scheduled on Google Maps on a Wednesday at 6 p.m. I can also give extra points or takeaway points based on the location and the surrounding area of the stadium. All right, stadium number one, Chase Field, home of the Arizona Diamondbacks. We start our list here in the Sun Belt, which is known for its sprawl and car dependency, but Phoenix might surprise you. The stadium is located adjacent to downtown and has connections to four bus routes and the Phoenix Light Rail. For a notably car-centric city, it has solid links to its baseball field. All right, Truist Park, home of the Atlanta Braves. The stadium is on the northwest side of the city and features three bus routes within a 10-minute walk. A 30-minute walk away, there's a bus transfer center that serves many more routes. The stadium area is mostly surrounded by suburbia, but there's a small stadium district adjacent to it. All right, Oriole Park, home of the Baltimore Orioles, one of the few stadiums on this list that I've actually seen in person. Oriole Park is only a 15-minute walk from downtown Baltimore, and adjacent to it is also a transportation center that connects the light rail link, the Camden Mark commuter line, and six bus routes in the vicinity. The Baltimore Metrolink subway is a 15 minute walk away as well, but it's also the least used metro in the US and only connects to the western suburbs, so not very useful. The MTA Maryland Transit can be unreliable at times, but the stadium placement is one of the best in the nation. All right, we're kicking it back with this one. Fenway Park, home of the Boston Red Sox, one of the most OG stadiums, one of the best. With a plethora of bus routes, the Worcester Regional Rail Line and the Boston Green Line, Fenway Park is one of the best parts in the US for transit access. It's also located in a great part of the city. The only reason why it's not a 10 out of 10 is because of the recent problems on the MBTA. All right, and as we slowly move over to Guaranteed Rate Field, home of the Chicago White Sox, a team that you just never think about because the Cubs just overshadow them. Anyway, the team is adjacent to the L's Red Line, the Rock Island Metro Route, and about five bus routes. But it's also next to a highway, which just isn't the best for the pedestrian experience. All right, as we move north to Wrigley Field, one of the most classic baseball stadiums, home of the Chicago Cubs, the stadium is adjacent to the red and purple lines and is about a 15-minute walk from the brown line. The stadium district has great urban fabric, not really a parking lot in sight. It is one of the best and most historical ballparks in the nation, and it's definitely worth a visit. All right, moving over to Ohio, the state that must be eliminated, we go to Great American Ballpark, home of the Cincinnati Reds. The Cincinnati streetcar is right outside the stadium, and many bus lines are not too far either. Unfortunately, you have to cross many lanes of motor traffic to reach the stadium for many of said bus stops. As we stay in Ohio, we move over to Progressive Field, home of the Cleveland Indians. The Tower City RTA subway station is a 10-minute walk away, and trains come every 15 minutes. The Cleveland Metro is one of those systems that just very few people know about, but it's there doing its thing, and there's also a few bus stops in the general area as well. Moving across the Midwest, we find ourselves at Coors Field, home of the Colorado Rockies. Union Station is just a few blocks away, which has four regional rail lines, and pretty close are also light rail trains and buses. The stadium is also not too far from downtown. All right, and as we move back towards the Rust Belt, we find Comerica Park, home of the Detroit Tigers. This is one of three stadiums on this list I've actually personally been to. The Q Line, along with buses, run along Woodward Avenue, right next to the stadium. And the stadium is also right in smack dab downtown, which is slowly coming back after its lowest point around 2010. Detroit was really struggling. As you can see, there is a ton of surface parking around the stadium, and Detroit being the Motor City doesn't really surprise me. And I got to the stadium in a van with a bunch of other people, so I don't have any personal transit experience to the stadium. Heading south, we find Minute Maid Park, home of the Houston Astros, really solid for the state of Texas. It's 6 out of 10 because it's near two lines for the light rail and some bus stops. The stadium is also adjacent to downtown, and the area around it is starting to be built up from what it used to be, which you can see in this famous picture of Houston. Lots of parking lots. All right, and as we move north, we're going to Kauffman Stadium, home of the Kansas City Royals. This is possibly, most likely, the least transit-friendly stadium that does have a local bus route every 30 minutes. 
but that route is more than an hour from downtown and it's about a 15 minute walk from the stadium. All right, and as we move to the West Coast, this is our first West Coast team on the list, Los Angeles Angels, who play at no other than Angel Stadium. The transit near the stadium is the Metrolink Amtrak station and local bus routes. It's about a 15 minute walk to the stadium from the station, but a lot of these routes don't run very often, making it not the best experience. All right, let's move north to Dodger Stadium, home of the Los Angeles Dodgers. I'm giving this one a 4 out of 10 because of the fact the stadium is located in the general vicinity of downtown and Union Station. Eight plus rail lines run to and from Union Station, and bus route 4 puts the stadium around 30 minutes from Union Station. You can choose to walk, and it'll take about 45 minutes, or you can use the Dodger Stadium Express Bus, which runs from Union Station and South Bay to the stadium on game days. Moving to the other south coast of the United States, we move to Lone Depot Park, home of the Miami Marlins. There are four close bus routes and the stadium shuttle that goes to some of the surrounding neighborhoods. Also, I give it a point for being within a 25 minute walk to the Civic Center and Colmer Miami Metro stations. Bit of a long walk, but you're already going to a game, you might as well get some exercise. It's also located in the Little Havana neighborhood, which just has lots to do and is culturally very different than any of the other neighborhoods on this list. Moving to somewhere a bit colder, we go to American Family Field in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, home of the Brewers. The closest transit is an every 15 minute semi-BRT system that is about a 20 minute walk from the stadium. Moving northwest just a tiny bit, we go to Target Field, home of the Minnesota Twins. The stadium is located downtown with tons of bus lines near the stadium. Target Field light rail stations are also right next to the station, making it pretty convenient. Unfortunately, Metro Transit's light rail in Minneapolis is the most dangerous light rail system in the U.S., according to the Federal Transit Administration. And let's kick it over to one of the most OG classic baseball teams in the U.S., the New York Yankees. And of course, they play at Yankee Stadium. There are so many different ways to get here. It's in New York City, and I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Maybe that's hasty. I don't know. If you've been to the stadium, let me know if you think it lives up to the hype or if it deserves maybe an 8 or a 9. Moving over west just a tiny bit, we come to New York Mets, where they play at City Field. The Subway 7 local and Express run right next to the stadium, and the Long Island Railroad Station is connected to the subway station. Buses Q48, 66, and 19 are some of the bus routes that run near the stadium. I'm adding two extra points for it being in the transit haven, that is New York City, but I'm also taking away a point for the very large surface parking lot adjacent to the stadium, a bit surprising coming from New York City. As we move across the country to somewhere a bit more dry, we go to the LV Athletics, Las Vegas Athletics, the newest baseball team if you include teams that move. Moving from Oakland, California, the Athletics are officially moving to Las Vegas and they plan to build their stadium where the Tropicana Resort is right now. It's located right next to the Las Vegas Strip, which has the Deuce Bus, funniest name ever, service every 10 to 15 minutes. And on the other side, there are a few low frequency bus routes as well. Moving over to the East Coast, classic city, Philadelphia Phillies play at Citizens Bank Park. All of Philly's sports venues are located here in the south, around four miles from Center City. SEPTA's Broad Street Line runs solid service from NRG Station near the sports complex to Center City and to neighborhoods in the north. The main transit problem is that many Philly sports fans live in the suburbs, and there's no direct route from the many suburban rail lines to the sports complex. Everybody must transfer in Center City and take the Broad Street Line or a bus down. The ample amount of parking near the stadiums reflects this reality. Also, go birds and go Phillies. Let's kick it to the other side of Pennsylvania, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, my grandfather's team when he was growing up. The rail lines that connect the stadium to some of the suburbs are not very frequent, but they do extend pretty far. The stadiums are right across the river, which is about a 10 minute free light rail ride or a 15 minute walk from downtown. Not too bad. Let's kick it to the other side of the country and go to Petco Park, home of the San Diego Padres. All three lines of the MTS light rail and bus routes are located near downtown where the stadium is located. Not too bad at all. Kicking it north, but staying in the sunny state of California, we hit the San Francisco Giants at Oracle Park. There are two Muni rail lines, four bus routes, and the Caltrain are all in the vicinity of the stadium, and the stadium's just in a pretty good location. You got views of the city and views of the water. It's a pretty nice place to be on a warm spring day. Kicking it north on the west coast, we're going to T-Mobile Park, home of the Seattle Mariners. The stadium is located right near a light rail station and King Street Station but is also near a bunch of highways. The area, right south of downtown, also has bus service as well. Not too bad, but not great. The St. Louis Cardinals, who play at Bush Field, which is right in downtown St. Louis, there's a light rail station situated adjacent to the stadium, and two low-frequency bus services run in the general area, but from what I've heard, the light rail runs pretty well. 
Kicking it back to Florida, we go to Tropicana Field where the Tampa Bay Rays play. Tropicana Field is a 12 minute walk and bus ride from downtown St. Petersburg. Contrary to their name, the Tampa Bay Rays Stadium is located in St. Petersburg, 17 miles from Tampa proper. The every 15 minute BRT light bus called the Sunrunner runs right by the stadium as does many other low frequency bus routes. Kicking it down to Texas again, going to Globe Life Field where the Texas Rangers play right outside of Dallas and Fort Worth in Arlington, Texas. The closest transit station to the stadium is a 12 minute drive but a three hour walk. There are no fixed route bus lines that go to the stadium, but there is an on-demand rideshare service called VIA that runs in the city that you could use to get from the Trinity Rail Express station to the stadium. However, this solution most likely wouldn't work on a large scale for thousands of sportsgoers trying to go to the same game at the same time, as VIA uses vans rather than full-size transit buses. Kicking it up to the great white north, well, maybe not white, well, these guys are playing, we go to Rogers Center, home of the Toronto Blue Jays. Roger Center is smack dab in the middle of all of it, less than a 15 minute walk from Toronto Union Station and surrounded by streetcar lines. Union Station is the terminus of all the GO train regional rail routes and the Line 1 subway line. The amount of rail lines in the vicinity kind of destroys my rating system. Suffice to say, you have many transit options to get to Roger Center if you're in Toronto and anywhere near a suburban station. All right, last but certainly not least, we kick it to the one and only nation's capital, Nationals Park, home of the Washington Nationals. This is the only transit I've taken to a sporting event. I took the DC Metro from Vienna to Nationals Park, and I had a great experience. The Metro Green Line, this runs every six to eight minutes, can transport around nine to 12,000 people total per direction, and is a great link for the stadium. During the inaugural game in 2008, Metro announced that it transported around 21,000 people to the stadium. The station also supports DC United's Audi soccer field, killing two stadium birds with one transit station stone. Thank you so much for watching this video. Editing it was a pain because my Final Cut Pro software does not want to play nice with these Google Earth renderings. I don't know what the problem is. It's really annoying. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and more videos coming soon. I don't know where, but uh, we'll see. Have a good day.